I used to be that skinny guy that couldn't seem to put on muscle no matter how hard I tried or at least I thought. To be honest, I kind of thought I was destined to be small and skinny because I convinced myself that I was a hard gainer. But let's keep it real, calling yourself a hard gainer, unless you have a medical condition, is just an excuse. And that's because once I started to work harder, eat smarter and train with more intention, I began to see real results. So if you're in the same boat that I used to be in, I'm here to tell you today that you can build that physique. You can build muscle despite you calling and believing to yourself that you're a hard gainer because the truth is you're not. You just simply don't know about the seven essential tips that I'm about to tell you that will transform your body once you apply them. So hit that like button, sub to the channel and let's get into the video. First and foremost, you need to eat more than what you think you do. Typically, as a hard gainer, your metabolism is likely going to be faster than the average individual. So in a way, your metabolism is working against you and that also means that your natural appetite is probably way lower than most people. But I'm not going to sugarcoat it. If you're not gaining weight, you're not eating enough, period. We're all humans, which means that our body follows the law of thermodynamics. That essentially means if you eat more than what your body burns, you are going to gain weight. Oppositely, if you eat less than what your body burns, you are going to lose weight. That is simply the process of a calorie deficit and a calorie surplus. But today we're focusing on gaining size, right? So you're going to need to be in a caloric surplus. When I used to call myself a hard gainer at the start of my fitness journey, I used to think I was eating a lot. If I felt full, I'm going to gain weight. But as I said at the start of the video, if you think you are a hard gainer, it automatically means a lot of the time your appetite is probably below average. So now if you're eating a below average amount of food, you're probably not going to be gaining weight, bro. So how do we ensure that you can eat in a manner that's going to help you stay in that surplus whilst getting the benefits of, you know, building lean muscle, building good muscle? And that's where tracking calories comes into play. Listen, you can make excuses of, oh, I can't be able to track my calories, that's too much time, it's going to take too much work. But if you really want to put in that work, if you want guaranteed results, that's what tracking calories accurately can do for you. Because you can guarantee that day to day you are in a surplus if you track your calories properly. I decided to invest into a calorie app, which was my net diary. This isn't even promo, I'm just putting you guys on game. So you want to track your daily intake and make sure you're eating above your maintenance calories. Preferably a surplus of 300 calories max. And the quickest way to find your maintenance calories is to use an online calorie calculator. I'll provide you guys with a link to one in the description below. When you're trying to eat more, but you're relying on your appetite, you need to be extremely smart and cautionary with the type of foods that you eat. Going back to the previous point about having a fast metabolism and a below average appetite, you need to hack your body into increasing the appetite. Your appetite will tend to increase with muscle development. However, if you follow this next tip, you can speed up that growth. You can put yourself in a position where you can eat 3000 calories a day and you still want more. You want to focus on calorie dense foods that pack a lot of calories in a small amount of food. Granola is a great example. A single bowl can give you anywhere between four to 500 calories. So now if you have two bowls of granola, you could look at 1000 calories. And again, if you claim that you're a hard gainer, that's gonna be an easy way to start the day. Another great recommendation is cereal. We all like cereal, I like cereal. Cereal is still on my diet. However, you wanna keep it to a minimum. Maybe a few times a week you can indulge, but cereals are a great way of getting in more calories without actually feeling too full. Further example of calorie dense foods is like peanut butter, nuts, seeds, some forms of oats. Foods that don't have a lot of volume, but they have a lot of calories inside of them. So that way you can eat more, get the appetite up and get those calories in, which is gonna help you build more muscle. One of the biggest game changers for me was incorporating liquid calories into my diet. When I first heard this suggestion from someone online, I kind of thought, how the hell is a drink gonna help me get any more calories? I want you to think about what is easier for you, eating four boiled eggs or drinking a glass of milkshake. A lot of the time when we drink things, it is a lot easier to get down than eating something. Liquid calories like those in protein shakes are extremely efficient. They're easier to consume quickly, which is really good if you're on the go. Plus, you can create your own protein or your own protein smoothie based drink that is gonna help you get in all of these nutrients and good food whilst getting in more calories. Tip number four, do not skip out on carbs. There's this false facade image that is being portrayed in the fitness industry right now about carbs that carbs are bad for you don't eat carbs it's gonna ruin your look it's not gonna make you look good but you need to actually understand what carbs are 
Carbs are your primary source of energy. Fats are your secondary and protein tends to be for muscle recovery and growth. It's going to help you rebuild and grow muscle. Okay, so those are your macronutrients. So when you now work out and your carbs are super low, how can you expect to perform? They are essential to build good muscle. For the longest time, I didn't realize how important carbs were. I was too focused on protein, protein this, protein that, and I started to neglect my carb intake. When you're lifting heavy, your body relies on glycogen to perform. And glycogen comes from carbs, so you need carbs and glycogen to perform. By making carbs a staple in your meal, especially pre and post workout you ensure that your muscles have the energy to perform and grow stronger so that's going to boost not only your gym performance but how you feel your muscles are going to look fuller as well and you're going to perform way better in and out of the gym tip number five optimize your hydration sleep and recovery i cannot stress this enough because the reality is you do not build muscle as you train your muscle is not growing in fact it's breaking down so now when you go back home how you eat what you have drank throughout the day is going to contribute the most to how much muscle you build because even looking at studies for us men it shows that two to three nights of less than seven hours of sleep can decrease your testosterone so just by not getting enough sleep, you're already negatively impacting your potential for muscle growth because we all know that testosterone is a driver for muscle growth. When I first began working out, I'm gonna be real, I was so focused on like just in the gym, you know, gym, 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 thinking that more is more. When in reality, a lot of the time with fitness, less is more. You know, following the fundamentals, being smart, having intent, understanding that overtraining injuries all of that stuff can set you back months so we want to make sure that we're optimizing the fundamentals hydration is key because water is involved in the metabolic process of building muscle dehydration can lead to cramps fatigue inflammation and poor performance within the gym sleep is your body's natural recovery process during deep sleep your body literally releases growth hormone which is essential for muscle growth tip number six is that progressive overload is essential i've spoken to so many people that have been working out for years and they don't even understand what progressive overload is and it might sound like a fancy term but it literally means that over time you're gradually increasing the intensity of your workouts they're getting harder not easier I've been that guy where I've been stuck on the same weight for time, not because I struggled to go up, but I just didn't go up. I was very comfortable with lifting the same weights every session, but how can you expect your muscles to grow when you're not providing a new stimulus? If you're lifting the exact same weight every session, there's no new stimulus being provided. The only time in which this may work is the first couple months of your gym journey. However, we're, we're here to speed up those first couple months, you know, you're a hard gainer or you claim that you're a hard gainer. So an increase of intensity means that over time, your sets are growing up, your reps are growing up, your form is getting better. When I first began, I wasn't really tracking my progress as well. I was kind of just lifting what I assumed was hard. But that's why I say, again, if you want to maximize your gains in the gym, you need to be tracking your workouts. There are so many workout apps out there. I use Strong. This is not promo again. I'm just putting you guys on what I use. I use an app called Strong. Because when I started to track my workouts, even on the days when I didn't feel like lifting heavier or pushing myself, I always did because just me seeing that extra plus sign on the volume, the extra plus sign on the intensity, it gave me more fuel, more reason to push myself. And it held myself accountable because I couldn't compare my stats to the last session. And I'm a gamer, right? So I would look at it as kind of like a game where I'm trying to max out my stats and better myself each time and level up. Like going to the gym isn't just about showing up and lifting. It's about pushing your limits, surpassing your limits pushing harder than last time. And when you track your workouts, it is one of the easiest ways to guarantee you that you do this. And finally, in my opinion, this is the most important tip. Let's talk about the hard gainer label. I used to label myself as a hard gainer and kind of blame that as a reason and as to an excuse as to why I wasn't seeing the results I wanted in the gym, why I wasn't making progress. But here's the truth. I used to call myself a hard gainer but once I started following the tips in this video, my progress was so good to the point where I didn't associate myself as a hard gainer anymore.
And I feel like that's the key you need to adapt, the mindset you need to have if you really want the best for yourself. Once I stopped using it as an excuse and I took responsibility for everything regarding my gym journey, that's when everything changed. The reality is with the right approach, any individual can gain muscle and that includes you. It might take more effort and attention to detail, but it still makes it possible. The key is to focus on the fundamentals, eating enough, training smart and providing your body with the nutrients that it needs. Don't let a label define you or limit your potential. If you're struggling with your own journey, I want you to remember that you're not alone. There are countless guys that are facing the exact same issue as you. If you're interested in my self-improvement community, link in the description below. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button, sub to the channel, keep pushing, stay focused and I promise that the results will come your way. Keep it locked in. I'll see you guys next Sunday.